I look at the churches as being a gay man, you know, half the churches don't want you anyway. And I was sitting in my bed that Saturday night, got a phone call from a, a friend who just called and said, you know, Chris, I just felt something was wrong. And in my story, I think that's the first part of when God stepped in. Because, you know, uh, she knew I'd been looking, so she made me promise not to do anything that night. To pick one of the three churches that I uh, kind of limited my search down to and go the next day. And after that, if I still felt like doing myself in, I had her blessing. <laughs> <laughs> in all honesty, I had to the words to heart, and uh, just by luck of the draw and convenience, this church was actually the one that I picked to come to first, even though truthfully, I kind of looked at the website and they were uh, open and affirming and kind of like, yeah, right. <laughs> I had experience with the Catholic Christian Center in Sacramento and uh, North East Baptist Church, and, you know, it just didn't seem like it, I figured what the heck. So I rode the light rail over to McDowell Station, made the walk over to the door, stood there about two minutes, walked back to the light rail, got on the next train, got back off, walked back over to the church, <laughs> <laughs> stood at the door again and went, no, this is, this is mine. Walked back to the light rail. One more time, I walked over this time, the door was open and Kathy was standing out there and he kind of pulled me in. Here, well, if someone's invited me in, I guess I might as well. I slapped on the name tag and uh, sat right where Ron Marlowe was sitting, I think, uh, if I remember right. So many people came in and came up and took my hand, it was just mind boggling. Choir was practicing, and I'd been involved with choirs during college, I thought, wow, that's, that's gorgeous. God number two. Uh, then the big God influence, Steve starts speaking. <laughs> and I think a lot of us have had the feeling of that Steve is where it felt like he was speaking right to me. And the sermon that day, I can't remember completely, but basically it was everyone's word in the media. No matter what. Even if you're gay. That just didn't sound like anything I've ever heard anywhere. And for the first time in probably two years before that, I felt hope for the future. And I, as I headed out the door, of course, Steve grabbed me, and we had a very brief talk. And I was invited over across the hall, but truthfully, I was so overwhelmed with the extravagant welcome that I really did get that day. Everyone wanted to talk to me that I, I just couldn't. I had to, to leave. But it wasn't because I didn't feel wanted, it was because I felt too wanted. <laughs> 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 I know, this is sounding joking, but still, I get through a, a very personal thing. Wednesday, I get home, and there's a uh, letter from the church. First part, it kind of looked like a form letter from Steve, but on the bottom was a handwritten paragraph that directly related to what we talked about. And I was, you know, I was sitting here going, after 22 years in the hospitality field, going, man, this customer service is great. About <laughs> 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 once before, so I think this place deserves a second chance. Came the next Sunday, God for new uh, member meeting. And sitting in that meeting with Dave Susan Anderson, who a lot of you remember, and a few other people and going through our stories, I didn't tell at home. I didn't even bother going up to check out the church to be attitudes or leave their Methodists that said they were open and early. I joined the next weekend. And as I say, uh, the rest is kind of history. And I lie here now today because of it, because of you. And because of God's share, of course, through you. And you may ask why I bothered to tell you my story. Is it because I'm looking for sympathy, for more hope? No, I've already got that in space from the guy upstairs and every single one of you sitting in this room. And that includes you, Steve, of course. No. And this is because I'm special. Oh, God, no. There's probably at least 12 of you out there right now that tell the exact same story. Now, the reason I'm putting you through this, and because of stewardship, 
It's because of those thousands of people on the other side of those red doors that need what I have found here and what a lot of you have found here, that generosity of God that a lot of them don't think they're worthy of, just like I did. And if this church wasn't here, they might never find it. And so at this point, on behalf of the Stewards Committee, would you please pray for me? The stewardship letter uh, printed in the order of service. Holy God.